Assistant, your mirror can be judging you as well. Connected devices are entering our homes in ways that are personal and are deeply private. They collect data about us at incredibly private moments, and we're asked to trust these machine learning opaque things with that data. Because do you know what Google does with the data from the home device? or Amazon, or L'Oreal for that matter. And is it worth trusting? What might happen? The question that we're asking is who is responsible for ensuring that these connected devices that we allow into our lives behave ethically? It's a big question. Is it the government? Is it the people that create these devices? Is it us? Can we actually ensure that this happens in ways that doesn't harm or at least doesn't humiliate us? Really, there's no playbook. There's no rules of conduct right now. Technology de developers and designers at both large companies and those working to disrupt and to innovate, entrepreneurs, makers, hackers, they're charged with making moral choices 
and they're expected to get it right, whatever right is. The European Union General Data Protection Regulation has set out a number of guidelines in each me member country has a complicated web of laws and policies for what might be done to personal data and how it might be managed. But as we all know, laws are complex, and even lawyers are having trouble navigating these deep waters. How can we expect developers and designers to do so as well? So then the question is, right now, before I'm going to talk about ethics, Ethics is talked about, and a lot of concerns about privacy and ethics are considered post hoc, kind of bolted on at the end. Oh, right, we shouldn't be collecting this data, or we should be asking consent for this. And with this project, we want to change this. So this is the project. We propose that we want to change how ethics is considered in the process of designing technologies for the Internet of Things. The project is funded by the EU Horizon 2020, the Research and Innovation Program, and I have now fulfilled the uh, part of the agreement with the EU for mentioning every time this project is mentioned, which program funded it, and the fact that it's funded by the EU. Moving right along. All right, so what it is that we're going to do? Virtual analyzing the map of the ethical practices of European hardware and software entrepreneurs, maker and hacker spaces, and community innovators. Because actually, we don't know what these are. We're going to, we're hoping to achieve three goals. One, simply is an understanding. How are uh, innovators enact ethics in the design, design of future devices? Because if we're going to try for a better future, devices that treat our data ethically, we best think about and talk to the people that are designing that future. We also want to generate a new framework that takes into account both ethics and social impact alongside privacy and personal data protection. Right now, impact assessments are only concerned with data protection and privacy. But we want to go beyond that, and we believe that is important. And finally, while the first two are perhaps academic and policy goals, this final one is the one that perhaps will help us change things. We want to develop tools to support ethical reflection and self-assessment as part of the design and development process. For that, we need to figure out what this design and development process looks like and then figure out if there are ways to change it. We're working on a fundamental assumption. The reason why we think this is possible is because we assume that when designers and technologists talk to each other, debate, disagree about what tools to use, to manage and respond to data, to manage and respond to users, that they are actually negotiating and enacting ethics. That's what we all do every day. We're enacting ethics. We make decisions, and some part of us is part of deciding whether what we're doing is fitting with a code of conduct, our internal barometer of right and wrong. And that's what ethics is, is an internal barometer of right and wrong. And about on that assumption, we think that by understanding what these ethical assumptions are, we can then figure out if there's ways to use reflection, to use thinking about futures, to use speculation, to adjust, to change, or to shift some of these ethical concerns. Whether or not it is possible, we'll find out. But to do this, we needed to get people from very different backgrounds to work together, and to truly work together. This project has researchers from anthropology, human-computer interaction, 
data mining, computer science, law, media studies, design. And we're not just doing our computer science, design, ethnography. In order for uh, any of us to get done what we promised, we have to work together. So while I have here listed different kinds of approaches, we have to figure out how to put them together. Like this, hopefully, in neat circles. But really, it'll take us three years, and hopefully by the end of three years, we'll get here to the tool set. A tool set that could potentially be useful um, by the communities of designers, makers, and hackers that think about hardware and software and the internet of things. And perhaps usable more broadly. But it will take some basic research, it will take some applied research, and it will take some design. And while this is all very neat, I'm sure it'll get messy and iterative, and we'll fail a bunch of times before we succeed. So we're looking forward to it. <coughs> Let me tell you a little bit about who we are. We have six partners in this project. This project is coordinated by the IT University of Copenhagen. The IT University of Copenhagen has three faculty and two PhD students that will be part of this project. We are joined by the London School of Economics um, and Political Science. We're joined by Uppsala University. We'll attend to the Torino and the Nexus Center for Internet and Society. The Open Rights Group as well as the Copenhagen Institute uh, of Interaction Design. And all of these people are coming together to do something fairly unusual that we're really excited about. We're going to try and see if we can make ethics an actionable process. If we can actually somehow intervene and affect how technology is built. We'll find out. So to launch this, to kick this off, I've asked three of our partners to come and talk to us, asking three questions. First, Alison Powell will talk to us, how should we respond to the dilemmas of connected life? Our lives are connected, it's undeniable. So what are we going to do about it? Then Alessandra Montalera will talk to us about how can we take into account the ethical and social impact in the use of personal data from a legal perspective. And finally, Annalie Berger will ask what is the role of design in generating a conversation about ethics among developers? How are we going to do that? And with that,